There are many, many books and reports that you're probably not aware of, of near-death experiences. One lady, Dr. Elizabeth Ross, who was awarded 10 doctor degrees, including MDs and PhDs, for her 20 years of work with people who had had near-death experiences and came back, like the one I just mentioned. She spoke to and did research on over 20,000 people that had had these experiences. She devoted her life to proving that life after death did exist and there was no such thing as death. Her work showed that death was really a beautiful experience and the beginning of another life. Her work showed that, that uh, this, after this life, there's a life full of promise, full of love, and meeting with those we love and who had died before us. She inspired the start of the hospice movement. Many of you have had loved ones that have gone to hospice, which is a, a place where people, that they, their bodies have, are, and the doctors have established that they will not recover. And so they go to this place, and it's an open room area usually to provide the family opportunities to come in and, and spend quality <coughs> time with their loved ones before they go on to be with the Lord. Well, she established that, and, and in that time, she talked to many people that had visited with the Lord Jesus Christ, that had visited in heaven and come back and expressed and shown, told people about what they had seen. This book, Ross, in her book, Life After Death, saying that the dying experience is almost identical to the experience of birth. It's a birth into another experience that can be proved. The death of a human body is identical to what happens when the butterfly emerges from its cocoon. The cocoon can be compared to the human body, but it's not identical with your real self, for it is only a house to live in for a while. You and I are living in a cocoon. We are not uh, physical beings with a, with a spiritual part of us. We are spiritual beings with a physical part of us. Your body is only a temporary thing, but your spirit, the, the spirit that God breathed in you uh, when you entered this world, that is the part of you that will never die. Amen. Sorry. It will never die. So it's very important for you to have a relationship with God so you go to be with Him and not be separated from Him at the end of your life. That's right. She said that as soon as this cocoon gets into an irreparable condition, talking about the body, be it from suicide, murder, heart attacks, chronic illness, it doesn't matter how it happens, it will release the butterfly of your soul. Amen. You will experience some important things which you ought to know in order not to be afraid of death anymore. You know, we, Jesus tried to get that point over to His disciples over and over again. And He's trying to get it over to you. Do not be afraid. Death is just a movement from this world to the next world. Yes, yes. Some of you uh, have uh, phobias about things like you don't want to get on an airplane. You don't want to get on a ship. Some of you don't even want to get in a car. <laughs> and, and you're afraid that, that you won't arrive at the next destination that God has established for you. But I'm telling you, uh, death is just a... It's a movement from one spot to another spot. Amen. Listen to what Dr. Ross has, has said in here. Some amazing uh, insights that she has heard from other people. These 20,000 people that have had near-death experiences. As soon as your soul leaves your body, you will immediately perceive everything happening at the place of death. You will know how you died. Be it at the scene of an accident or in a hospital room or wherever you left your body. You don't register this with your earthly consciousness but with a new awareness. You realize exactly what everyone is saying, what they think and how they act at the point of your death. It has even occurred that people remember the exact license plates numbers of the cars that hit them and drove off. And I was in another room with my daughter-in-law that had a near-death experience. She was delivering uh, her child, our grandson. 
And during that time, the Lord impressed on my heart heavily to go down to the chapel and pray hard. And I didn't even uh, know where the chapel was, but I found it and, and started praying. And I did, And she was in delivery for a long time. And I kept praying. And, and finally I came back and heard the news that she had uh, coded on the table. She had died on the table. And that they were bringing her back to life. They were trying to get her back to life during this time I was praying. And as, as they were doing this, she said, I was floating above my body. I saw everything that happened. I saw the doctors. I heard exactly what they said. I could tell you word for word what they said about me as I was delivering my child. I saw the child, my child come out. I saw the, the conversation of the doctors and nurses coming in and out. I saw everything. And then I, for some reason, I entered back into my body. And I can tell you that that reason was that God decided that He was going to let her stay here for a little bit longer. Amen. Amen. Another great important thing you need to know about heaven is that, at the, that Dr. Ross has, has gathered information from people who have gone and come back. At the moment of, your, of this transition, you're never alone. You are not alone now. That's right, that's right. But you don't know it. Some of you think you are alone. But I'm telling you, there are guardian angels with each and every one of you. Amen. There is a person, a representative from heaven in some form that is surrounding you every day of your life. Amen. But at the moment of your transition, your guardian angels, your loved ones who have passed on before you, they'll be there to guide you. What a wonderful thing to think about when you die that your loved ones are going to be there to meet you and carry you on to heaven. They're going to be your tour guides. They're going to be your welcoming committee. They're going to be the representatives from heaven that greet you and, and express to you how wonderful heaven is and how wonderful the Lord Jesus Christ is. There will always be someone there to help you. Most of the time, she says, it's a parent or a grandparent or a child if you've lost a child. Sometimes it is people you did not even know were on the other side already. This means that many children who do not have anyone they know on the other side will be greeted by Jesus. Amen. Amen. How precious. How precious. Paul said this, when this corruptible body, this fleshly body we have, puts on incorruption or our new body and this mortal body shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory yes there'll be a day when there'll be no more death no more separation when the lord comes back and sets things up there's not going to be any more dying there may be a time now where you or some of your loved ones leave this world to go to heaven but Jesus said you'll never die. Dr. Ross also observed and reported uh, that patients had reported to her that before you step out of your physical body in exchange for the new body that God will give you, you will often float through a tunnel, pass through a gate, or cross over a bridge. You know, we have these visual pictures of of people seeing in many reports of people seeing light at the end of the tunnel. It's a, it, it, that is where Jesus is. He's on the other side of the bridge at the end of the tunnel. He's uh, on the other side of the bridge. She says, after you pass through this tunnel or gate or crossed over this bridge, you are at its end embraced by a light. A light that is brighter than any white you've ever seen. Brighter than any spotlight that you've ever seen. It is extremely bright. And the closer you approach this light, you are embraced by the greatest, the most indescribable, the most unconditional love you can imagine. Amen. Some of you are very loving people and you show your love. Some of you uh, uh, have the ability to, to just bring joy and love into a room. But I'm telling you why, when you step into heaven, you're going to, to experience a love that you have never even begun to think of. It says, in this light, 
is the presence of Christ in God. You are now in their presence, and besides that, you are in the presence of knowledge. You know in a minute every detail, every thought that you've ever done while you were on earth. The Bible says that we'll all give an account of every word that we've said. And you'll know what the consequences from the results of your thoughts, words, and deeds are. That's why it's so important for you to put them underneath the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That's why you need to ask for forgiveness of your sins now. Because you're going to be accountable later. But if they're forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ, if the blood has been shed over your sins and my sins, then uh, those will be, the account has already been paid. It was paid on the cross.